Content warning. This podcast is intended for a mature audience. Contains graphic descriptions of violence and explicit language. Hello, friends, and welcome to Pods the Multiverse. We are an unofficial D&D podcast where four friends get together and play 5th edition rules in some of our favorite settings. My name is Jeppy, and I will be playing the role of DM for this season here in Icewind Dale. And joining me at the table are three of my favorite people. My name is Scala. I play Wink Wuggins, Halfling Bard, who's still trying to think of some things that rhyme with coal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Andy. I play Everett, the Reborn Ranger, who, when staring eye to eye to a little girl is struck multiple times with approximately one psychic damage and well is frankly pretty scared and doesn't know what's going on we'll see what happens and i'm jimmy i play jib the sea elf fighter who (laughs) oh sorry i uh slipped into fish language there for a moment the competition is over the best character intro recorded has been done this time season three episode 10 it has happened but we'll probably keep committing to the bit speaking of commitments a low monthly commitment to our patreon gets you some really cool exclusive content and we would really appreciate it. And also, like, check us out on Discord. Um, we'll talk about like video games and D and D and other shit and whatever else you want. And then um, also, we're on Twitter. Um, sometimes I post really thought provoking questions, like if you were a Dungeons and Dragons dish, why would I eat you for breakfast? I don't know. I don't know if I've ever asked that question, but shit like that. Anyway, check it out. All that out of the way. Let's get into episode ten. After braving the sea aboard their new ship, our party succeeded in routing out an enemy ship, only to come in contact with the Vetus battleship. After narrowly escaping their sights, our team and Kessa took a small rowboat to shore and waited for the enemy, only to find Garen Kang himself escorting Kessa's niece Denna towards Oral's fortress, Grimskull. All right. So left you all in your tiny little hut that you got from your twing of friends, and last you saw, a few hundred feet away, was the silhouette of what looked like Garen, Denna, and two others. Before any of you do anything else, however, I would invite you all to please make me a perception check. Ah, uh, the halfling nat one. That's going to be a five for me. My modifier went up to two now, so that's an eight. <laughs> okay. I got a 13. And am I still in pain? Those are discrete events where your head just pounds. I mean, you've taken the damage, but you're not rolling at disadvantage because you're so distracted in pain. If that does happen, which it might, I will let you know. Okay, got it. All right, cool. Let me roll for this little thing. Okay. Yeah, Kessa didn't roll well either. You're paying close attention to Garen and that party making their way. But suddenly, just outside your tent, you hear knocking, and it's a small sound. And you turn around and you see an ice Mephit waving at you. Do you all see that? And it's pronounced Mephit. Is it Mephit? Okay. I'll, I'll... We've historically <laughs> mispronounced it Mephit. You can just go ahead and credit <laughs> oh. all of Theros for saying that wrong. So, all right. Sorry. Finally, an error that's not my own damn fault, Andy. <laughs> cool. This ice Mephit is outside the tent waving at all of you. And I know what this is. I may have seen one of these before. Yeah, that's a good question. That's a good question. Sorry. Yeah, I assume everyone knows what a Mephit is. Why don't you all roll, I guess, uh... Arcana or nature, I would say? Arcana? They're magical. Or nature? Yeah, yeah. They're not animals, right? Like, they're firmly magical beings. Yeah. They're elementals, right? They're elementals. Uh, 14. 18. Nope. It's a nope. It's a nope. (laughs) Jib, you don't know what this is. Wink and Everett, you know what this is. Oh, let me roll for Kessa. (laughs) The one... No, she doesn't know what this is. Well, that's some sort of elemental critter. I pop my head out of the tiny hut. Something I can help you with, little feller? I would not do that. Hi, nice to meet you. I am very bored. Wink and Everett. Is this speaking in common? I was going to say, Wink and Everett, you don't understand it, but Jib, you can understand this, Mephit. What language is it speaking? If it's speaking primordial, I can also understand it, just saying. Is it Aquin? Thank you, yes. Ah, yes. Yeah. It is Aquin. Yes. Aquin is a dialect of Primordial. So I can mostly understand it. Okay, cool. So yeah, it said hi and it's bored. It said hi and it's bored. More or less. Je ne comprends pas Primordial. <laughs> that was not an accent I thought Wink had in their back pocket. <laughs> was that halfling? <laughs> I don't. No, I thought that would have been like elvish. Yeah. <laughs> Yo no hablo Primordial. <laughs> ich spreche kein Primordial. Oh, Jesus. I'll respond in Primordial. 
What do you want? I just don't want to be bored. Will you let me be your tour guide? I can show you all around. What do you want to do? Do you want to get to the Grim Scale? Do you want to get to the shipwrecks and we the treasure? We want you to be quiet. Okay, do you want to get some treasure? Would you like to avoid the Yeti caves? What can I help you with? I just want to help you. Oh, gods. Mm. To save time, I try and translate this to Wink, all the while saying, I do not know if we can trust this creature. And I would like to roll insight on all of these things. I got a 17. On a 17, this creature is not deceiving you. The creature is definitely bored and definitely looking for entertainment. You, however, even on a 17, are still unable to get a pretty good read as to whether or not this creature will get bored of helping you. I see. And whether or not that may lead to something worse down the road or it just abandoning you somewhere. It might be helpful. It might stop being helpful eventually. I relay that notion as well. All right. Ask them what their name is to begin with. Do you have a name, friend? It's Sopo. Sopo. Holy shit. All right. Nice to meet you, Sopo. <laughs> My name's Jib. It's been so long since the Chewingas. <laughs> Jumpy so- needed to put in something else cute <laughs> it's actually funny because that name came from the book the twingas did not fucking come from any book and this is actually its name in the book is sopo so get the fuck out <laughs> that's some serendipity for you all right well now if you can tell them that we need to follow that group of folks that just went up towards grim scala precisely my thinking Mm. Sopo, we're looking for those... Did you see those fellas who just went up the hill there? Can we still see them? You can still see them. They're walking further away from you okay. as the conversation goes on, but they're, like I said, a few hundred feet away. They're probably now six, seven hundred feet away, but you can still see them. It's getting harder to what with the twilight and everything. Mm. Them there. Let's walk and talk, Sopo. We can't be losing these. And if we're going to come afoul of danger on it, you just point it out to us, yeah? And I start walking, following... Garen and Denna and that party. I probably was never within 90 feet of any of them. No. no. Okay. All right. So you mentioned something about Yeti caves? Yeah, they got Yeti caves all over the island. I'd stay away. You know, Yetis. Not good. But they are a good place to rest if you really need it. You just might have to beat up a Yeti or two. You said Grim Scala? You're going there? Yes, we are trying to follow that group of people. And we believe that that is where they are going. Okay, let me take a look. Sopo pops their little head on the other side of your force barrier tent and sees the direction. Okay, it looks like they're headed northwest, but they're going a little more north than west. I think I can help you get there faster if you want to get there before them. Would that be helpful? Well, I reckon that would be helpful, get there before them. And would this quell your boredom? I mean, yeah, give me something to do. What do you think I do all day here on this island? Wink, we should keep moving. What do you do here on this island? I hope for visitors. Well, off we go then. Cool. Are you going to follow Sopo? Yeah. I mean, skeptically follow Sopo for now. Not directly into any apparent danger, but for the time being. I'll be following Garen, but if I see Sopo and the others going off in a different direction, I'll rejoin them. Okay, cool. Yeah. So just in terms of what this would look like to you all, Garen and his crew are 700 feet away from you. You can see the crest of Grimskull from almost anywhere on the island. You can see that they're headed in that direction. And you all are headed in the same direction, but if you were to pull out a compass, you'd be a little bit south of them as you begin to make your trek. Anyone that wants to roll me nature, go ahead and make that roll. Would survival also be all right for something like this? For this nature, specifically. Okay. Ten. Wow, another nat two. Dirty 20. Yeah, on a dirty 20. Everett, you can tell that Sopo is a mefit of their word. The direction and the course that you're headed seems much more streamlined towards your destination. I see. This uh, tiny elemental seems to be true to their word for the time being. We are getting much closer, much quicker. I don't want to stay here any longer than we have to. All right. I will say that this island is relatively flat. You don't see a lot of big mountains. And where you are right yet, you're not spotting any caverns or caves off to your sides at all. So it's a relatively uneventful trek. That being said, just in terms of the pace that you're making and your ability to outpace your targets, let's make a round of either nature or survival checks as a group here. 14. I will roll for... Kessa? That's a nat 20. 25. Is this considered Arctic terrain? This is definitely considered Arctic terrain. 
Yeah. Okay. What you got? 26. Does the fucking method even have to roll? <laughs> it rolled a fucking 19. Okay. <laughs> nice. Can you remind us, could we see how many figures are in this little group of Garens? You can make out the silhouette easily of Garen. You can also make out the silhouette of who you believe to be Denna, the young girl. Uh-huh. And then two other silhouettes. Two others. Okay, thanks. They don't look familiar to you. Do they look armed? They do. Sure. These are Vetus people accompanying Garen. Presumably. I'm not going to make you fucking roll in sight, but presumably that, that's <laughs> probably what Jib and anybody else would think. All right. You rolled really well on that survival, and you are making pace, and you are seeing that you're still able to see that party of four, and you are starting to get ahead of them, even though they had a head start over you. That being said, since you can see them, it is very plausible that they can see you. Let's make a round of group stealth checks to see if they can spot you all in your movements as you make it through the snow. Cool. Oof. Seven. That's going to be a 15. Nice. That is a 28. Kessa's fucking stealth mod is 10. Rogues. Yeah, so is mine. (laughs) (laughs) Skill-based classes. Skill-based classes. And she rolled a 19. Expertise feels so powerful at low levels. Like, holy shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. You outclass them by four and a half whole ass points there. Cool. All right. You can continue on your journey. Let's do one more round of survival just to fully outpace them. And then I'll describe what you all see after this one. Survival or nature? Yes. Yeah, sorry. Either or. Okay. Well, so 15. 16. Also a 16. Six. Yeah, you said that like you were disappointed. <laughs> well, I was. It was a good roll for me. <laughs> <laughs> you don't make phenomenal pace, but you don't run into any trouble along the way. You round up over a snowbank, and now you are able to see all of Grimscollet. It is an absolutely huge structure. It is fashioned from rock and ice. It is 600 feet tall in the shape of a skull. The face of this skull is very flat affect. There's no, like, eyebrow markings or anything. This is just a leering, terrifying skull shape with what looks to be a frozen spiked crown at its top. And we're looking up at the face of this skull? No, where you are, you're not quite at its side. If the thing were smiling, you would be where its mouth... You're smiling right now. Where your cheek and mouth meet is like where you are. And this is how I describe settings in d d It's the best you're going to get. There's probably some anatomical... The cheek. The cheek. You're near the cheek. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, the cheek. The cheek. on the edge of the mandible. On the edge of the mandible is where you all are. You are quite a ways away, but rounding over that hill, you're finally able to see it from the base of the earth all the way to the top. You notice from a distance some sort of either hill, maybe staircase, you can't tell from this distance, is what leads up to the very literal mouth of this fortress. I'm having a bit of an idea. Everett, you're kind of a wilderness type. Do you know much about yetis? I have told you before, if we were to assign a skill name to my qualifications as a, quote, ranger, it would not be in nature. I am a survivalist. Are you not that kind of ranger? Sopo says. <laughs> <sighs> I can try to see if I can recall anything, perhaps, from my previous experiences. Technically, Sopo wouldn't have been able to understand you, but I've wanted that line badly. I'll roll nature, what the hell. What are you looking to know, just so I can... Stella wants to know if Everett could reproduce perhaps a call of a yeti that would signal danger or something that might call other yetis. Oh, okay. I scratch beneath my hood and I roll a 14. On a 14? Do you want to describe what you physically do? What are you physically doing to try and call the Yeti, as it were? We don't want to do that yet. Oh, okay. I think it's so we can perhaps use it if we need to, if I'm understanding that correctly. Mm. Okay, on a 14, Everett, you're not very confident in your ability to I don't think so. produce a Yeti call. You might be able to. It might not be one that makes Yetis ally to you. It might be one that signifies mating. <laughs> or danger in your direction or that you are a threat, you can try, but you don't know what effect doing that might have. Got it. That's fair. Let me ask this. On a 14, do I at least generally know about yetis? Perhaps I've seen some or heard about some that I would be able to back up them being quite dangerous in some way or another. Yeah, on a 14, you know that yetis vary. It depends on their age. Younger yetis are much easier to handle. 
What you don't know, and without any insight, you know Sopo might be able to tell you, being an inhabitant, is what the relative age of the yetis are that inhabit most of the caves here. Got it. Wink, I am trying to recall all that I can, but even if I were able to call out to them, it would be quite dangerous. Perhaps our friend can give us some more insights. Sopo... You have been very kind so far. Please tell us how many and, if you are able, how large or old are the yetis that dwell within this place. Thank you. Hospitality is my maiden name. Depends on what cave you go to. They got multiple caves on this island. But, yeah, we're smack in the middle of two caves with some of the bigger ones. You might want to be careful. Very well. Wink, Jib. Might I suggest, if we are this far ahead of our adversary now, we consider a sneak attack as a possible option. Perhaps try to pick off Garen's two allies so that he is alone. Anything to give us the upper hand that is not so unpredictable, albeit original, as trying to summon some yetis. I'm not too good at stealth or sneaking. I might blow the whole thing for you. Why'd you ask about the yetis? You want to rest? No, no. I was thinking maybe if they're dangerous for us, they could also be dangerous for Garen and his buddies. I relay that. Oh, you want to summon a yeti? To create a distraction. I know exactly how to do that. I don't know, Everett, if you're, like, relaying this consistently throughout the conversation. I am. It does now? But I would make sure... We do not want this this moment. We are simply coming up with a plan. Wouldn't that be dangerous for Denna, though? Have a yeti stomping around? Sure, we want to inconvenience Garen, but there's a girl among that group as well. This must not happen, Kessa says. If you were to leverage... Any sort of distraction, we would need to be at the ready. It might add one more complication to all of this. Wink, didn't you say something about a major illusion? Yeah, that was what I was thinking I might do in order to get that yeti to show up, right? I make a fake yeti, it does a yeti call, and the other yetis come down and engage with the Vetus folk. And then during all that commotion, we can make off with Denna and maybe not even have to fight him at all. That's my thing. Oh, See, I was thinking that just the appearance of one, let's say, for instance, 20-foot yeti might be enough to send Garen in a different direction. These are unknowns that we cannot predict. And to be fair, I can predict them better than any of you. I know Garen. Do you think a yeti is going to have him running away? He's here to fight Oral. I don't think he's going to be cowed by some wild creatures. It just buys us a little more time. But the longer we keep talking, that time is lost anyway. Wink can turn invisible. Can you also create this illusion at the same time? Nah, it'd make my head hurt a little too much. Jib, perhaps if we spend the rest of our preparation time concealing you, I can hide. Kessa, who has been quite good at hiding thus far, can hide as well. Now, Jib, I got a bit more juice in the old magic reservoir. I could make both of us invisible at the same time. Oh, I didn't realize you could do such a thing. Well, I couldn't up until a few moments ago. (laughs) Is that worth the risk of expending said capabilities? Well, it's either that or leave it to chance. And we all know how you feel about leaving things to chance. Yes, we do. Oh, I hate it. Chance never seems to favor me. (laughs) (laughs) Jim tears down the fourth wall. Jesus Christ. Everett does not laugh at that. Sopo, how quickly do you think the nearest yetis would arrive if we were to successfully call them? Well, that's hard to predict. You see, there's a certain way you summon the yeti, and it really is up to Oral. What does that mean? Say more, please. So, aside from finding a yeti and making a mean face at it, the only other way to summon it is to make Oral want the yeti there. And that's the way I know how to do it. And we can do that way. It's just that she'll summon the thing because she can do that. It's her island. This is her home. So she can make that happen. But the thing is, she gets to determine when the Yeti shows up. It might run over to us. It may walk. It may even take a couple naps in between. It's really up to Oral. Mm, We should begin hiding either way. I agree. I do not think it would be wise to venture further into that place, pointing to the giant skull. But... While we have this element of surprise, which we lost only hours ago, only to make up, I think it is our best option. Perhaps as a backup, we try to call these yetis. 
Yeah, the more I think about it, especially if it involves getting Oral's attention, the less I like it. Precisely. And, in the same way you have found some new arcane ability, I appear to be able to move much quicker were we to engage in combat. If we have to run once we have secured the girl, I believe this to be wiser, if need be. Alright, I just want to suggest one more possible course of action here. Instead of turning me invisible, why not turn Denna invisible? Can you do that? I can. The only difficulty is, I gotta be right beside her to do that. Shouldn't be too hard if you yourself are invisible. Well... It has to be done at the same time. That's the rub. Yeah, it ain't quite work like that. No. And the other thing is, if and I do that, and I don't think it's a bad idea, don't get me wrong, but if I'm hiding her, I can't focus on things that might help y'all make a better fight. They would not be able to fight back. If it comes to combat, no one is safe from me until Denna is secure. She says, clutching her sword. And besides, she's changed. Denna doesn't fully realize it, but she can fend for herself. What do you mean by that, Kessel? And how do you know this? What connection do y'all have to this place? I don't have any connection to this place. Insight check. I literally paused because I'm like, just I don't I don't want him to cut me the fuck off while I'm saying my next thing. So let him do his thing, get it over with, <laughs> get it out of his system. Twenty five. On a twenty five, she's telling the truth. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Out of 25, I'm sharing my notes yeah, with you. Yeah, literally. On here, here's my fucking <laughs> campaign notes. Um, uh. Out of 25, she is telling the truth, though. Ever, for real. Okay. I don't know if Denna's connection is to this place or to Oral, but something changed her about two years ago. She's been different. She's had moments. She talks about connection to the cold and turning things to ice, and there's more to her. And I suspect that bringing her to this place might just want her to be safe. I don't know what's going to happen with Denna, but I hope that whatever strange things have happened to her in the last couple of years, if they manifest tonight, they help keep her safe. To ask me to explain more is to ask me to explain the nature of the gods. I don't know. I just don't know what's going on with my niece. What were her parents like? One of them was your sibling. My sister. They were good, honest people from Bremen. They were plain people. You can roll insight on that. Tonight's Wink Wuggins is brought to you by the number two. Oh, no. Yikes. I got a 17. Cool. I got a 17. You can see pain in Kessa's eyes. Like, she's mourning a life she never got to have. I rolled a zero on my insight. That might be Kessa in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> that one minus one. Oh, no. <laughs> I think this plan is sound. I think if anything goes wrong, we have a way out. We have, seemingly, a number of ways out. Everett is going to begin setting his three bear traps. So real quick, this is not where Sopo intended to take you. This is not the end of the trek to Grimskull, nor the location that Sopo was headed. Got it. I stopped here to give you the description of Grimskull because it's the first time you're able to take it all in. We should get closer. Yes. But we're still a ways away. You're still a ways Uh away. We should get closer. I thought we were right outside it. No, no, you're still a ways away. Got it. And will the other party pass through this place? You can't see them at the moment, but pretty confident based on your trajectories as you parted ways, you're not going to encounter them. And if you do, like, you'd have to run a while and chances of getting the jump in them slim to none. Okay, well, let's, I guess, walk closer to the giant skull then. Yeah, like, my thinking is if we can find a primary entrance to this place, we can ambush them there. Totally. That's what I figured your plan would be. Okay, then we continue. All right, cool. As we head down the hill and resume our trek, let's make another round of survival or nature. Okay, 15. 11. A 14 survival. All right. Kessa's determination in this moment helps guide you through and keep your tracks. Sopo is distracted, hoping you'll tell them some fun story or something. Not really being that helpful of a guide, rolling a six. As you continue on, you make your way across a small snowbank, and as you round that corner, you see, actually, it's beautiful. This ice sculpture garden. And it's got figures of just frozen humanoids of all types. Fuck. Mm. This is not good. (laughs) Andy. Yep. Roll me history. You got it. 
That's a dirty 20. On a dirty 20, you're making your way through this sculpture garden. It's not just humanoids. You see a few other things. Large. They look like trees. Everett, you make your way through all of you winding through these figures. You see a group of six figures, and all of them look very familiar to you. They are frozen. They're long gone. What is this? And in a moment... What is this? Your mind flashes to you and these people at a campfire out in the cold. And then the moment is gone. No. No, this place. Everett, you alright? These people. I know these people. From before. I see. I'm sorry. I... I only remember them from what I have seen. I do not know them, but I know them. We must hurry. We cannot dwell in this place. Oral keeps her trophies here. Her trophies? But I forget, did you want the Yeti or not? Her trophies? No. You okay, buddy? So how long have you dwelt in this place? Oh jeez, I can't remember. Can you recall a time ever when more of these would appear? A time when there were less of them here? I can't count the years anymore that I've been here, but one of the ways that I can try is to try and remember when these ones weren't here. Pointing to your group. That's so fucked. What? (laughs) God damn it, Jeffy. What? (sighs) Continue. And then those ones weren't there either, but this one's always been there. It's an ice sculpture of like a yeti. As long as I remember that one's been there. That one too. Pointing to a sculpture of a tree looking thing. Basically, Sopo's indicating that the passage of time for them is measured by how many victims and trophies are displayed in this sculpture garden. I would like to roll a wisdom saving throw, if that's okay. Go for it. I roll a 13. Okay. Everett, you're having a really hard time keeping it together. For the next leg of this journey, the next set of rolls you all do, you're going to roll at disadvantage. You're highly distracted. You are not in good sorts right now. Why do you ask? Is everything okay? I was once among these people. Hmm. I knew them from some time long ago. Yeah. I don't sit around here waiting for Oral to put these things here, so I don't know when they came. Let me think. Roll decently. Yeah, it's hard to say. I know they came here after this one, after that one, after that one, and that one too. Maybe before that one. I don't know. What are days anymore? Sopo's going to go through a lot of lengths to try and explain the concept of it's been somewhere in the last one to five years. Sopo doesn't really have a concept of time in the same way you do, so through some sort of verbal gymnastics, Sopo will relay that to you. We cannot dwell in this place. Whoever these people were, whoever I was, they are gone now. You all start to walk away. Wait a minute. The Yeti. Did we want it or not? Before you leave. It's important. Hmm. I think we're all set on Yetis. That's just my stance. Everett, before turning away from this scene for the last time, looks around. I want to see if there might be anything that sticks out within this ice among any of these figures that would have indicated that any of them were warriors or that they have equipment or weapon or armor or anything useful on them. Sure. Roll. Nature investigation. You're all welcome. With disadvantage, that is a 12 investigation. Scala's roll was no. (laughs) Yes. On a 12, you do not find anything immediately useful. You're able to tell that a lot of these things are deeply frozen. People are encased in ice deeply. On a 12, you do find weaponry. It's under blocks of ice. Some on the ground, underneath you, encased in the ice. Some in the hands of these people, encased in ice. I reveil myself in nihilism and continue on. <laughs> Please strike that. That sucks. I had to keep in a lot of things this campaign that you all wanted to keep in. I don't know. Scala will determine all. So you're making your way? Yes. Making a way. As you do that, Sopo will stay in the sculpture garden for a moment. Now there's something we gotta do here. If we do or don't want the Yeti. We don't want the Yeti. You don't want the Yeti. Okay. I think that was the consensus. God damn it, Jeffy. We probably want the Yeti, don't we? <laughs> Then all we gotta do is just go up to this one right here. Uh Uh-oh. And just give it a quick knock. And Sopo Uh will knock on this thing. What are you doing? As that happens... (laughs) Yeah. Fuck. As that happens, you hear what you thought was ear-piercing when Oral screeched is nothing compared to what you hear now. (laughs) 
and overhead you see ten times the size of Oral, a rock, R-O-C, flying through the sky and screeching. It passes over you and flies into one of the open eyes of Grimskull. What did you do? Well, I was bored, and, you know, I thought I should let Iskra know what's been going on, because y'all can't make up your mind, and I just thought it'd be a little more fun. So, I don't know. I thought I was helping. I'm sure you meant well. What should we prepare ourselves for? Well, usually after she does that, she goes in there, and it's not too long after, usually. And the ground starts to rumble. (laughs) We must run. Yep, sounds good. And... Two hands pop out of the ground. God damn it. Where some of those weapons were that you saw in the ground, hands start to pop up, skeletons forming from the ground. You motherfucker. Usually this happens. We're going to go ahead and roll initiative. (laughs) You all started to walk away from the garden, so you're going to start this a little bit with a distance. But let's go ahead and roll initiative. Okay. All right. Jeffy, I just want to say bravo for giving us the illusion of choice in this, whatever this is. There was a choice. Yeah, choice. I'm sure there was. There's no Yeti. <laughs> there was a choice. It may have ended up in a Yeti. This one ended up in two skeletons. 19. 14. 13. And my familiar is at 11. My familiar, by the way, is just circling overhead. You all weren't that far away from the edge of this ice garden. So from where little shitbird Sopo is, you're 60 feet. These skeletons popped up 30 feet in front of it. You're 30 feet from the enemy, from both of them. They are within 10 feet of each other. Can you give us a description of how big and stuff these are? These two frost skeletons are about 15 feet. They're quite large. They have horned helmets, rags tattered about them. They are wielding resplendent blue, smaller axes that they are wielding with both hands. Skyrim shit. Skyrim shit. Great. Giant Duragar skeletons. Right. Awesome. Two of them. How big are these? 15 feet tall. They're big. Ah. Good God. They would be really good at some sports. Okay, first one's going to go, and I'm going to just roll a D4 to determine which one of you it hits. So one, it's going for Everett. It walks up to you, Everett. It'll just do its attack at you, and it'll roll a 21. 21's definitely going to hit. Yeah, I thought it might. It's going to swing its axe at you, the blue shimmer of the axe trailing in its wake as it slashes you for eight damage. Definitely looking at those shiny blue axes. Very (laughs) (laughs) good. Wink, you're up next. All right. Can I get around the other side of this one that's engaged with Everett? Yep, you can do that. You can flank it. Cool. Great. I do that. I'm going to make my attack. 25 to hit, I hope, does it? Nice. 25 actually hits really easily. Yeah. Yeah, I should hope so. (laughs) Imagine if I said no. Well, then my next turn would be spent fleeing if you said no. Yeah. (laughs) Minimum damage of five. Nice. Cool. And then as a bonus action, I will hand out some bardic inspiration. Come on, gang, let's get on ahead. We ain't got time to be fighting these dead. Oh, wow. Everett, why don't you take a D8? You got it. Nice. Awesome. All right, that is your turn. We go to the other skeleton. This one will attack Jib. Uh Uh-oh. Uh-oh, indeed. Nine? No. 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 No, not even a little bit. About half. Cool. (laughs) That's its turn. Now it's Kessa's turn. Kessa is going to use all of her movement to head away from both of these. And she's actually going to pull out her short bow and make a ranged attack against the one that was already hit by Wink. Yep, 14 does hit. And she does nine piercing damage. She lets loose an arrow. She will then use her bonus action, maintaining that 30 feet. Everett goes next. She will grant you the help action on your turn. Great. Wonderful. There's only one in melee range of me right now. Yeah, the way this is, is there's one in melee range of you. Wink is in between two of them. So two are in melee range of Wink, but you're only in melee range of one. So if you're going to try and get some distance going, only one can make an AOO against you. I draw my crescent hand axe, and I am going to make a melee attack. I am flanking, and I have the help action. Wow, is this the first melee attack of the campaign from Everett? If you don't count the wall. Nope. Oh, it's not? No. Cultists. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Way back when. And because I have advantage, I have sneak attack, and I also have dread ambusher on my first turn. You rogue dipped. I forgot about that. That is a 16 plus mod that will hit. Indeed it do. I swing my crescent axe in 
for... And your inspiration dice can be used on damage as well. Yes, it can. A D8. Oh my god. I'm going to spend it now. Nice. The skeleton says zoinks. Maximum 8. <laughs> 23 slashing damage. Wow. Very good. Sopo, you better help us fight these. And because of Dread Animal, sure, I get a second attack. I'm still flanking. That is a nat 20. Should have saved your inspiration die, my friend. I should have, but, you know... You don't know what's going to happen. I mean, I'm sorry. Andy. Andy knows it's going to happen. Eventually, a natural 20 is coming to Andy. (laughs) And so that is another 14 slashing damage. Cool. You make these two successive blows into the skeleton. From that, it reeled back in... I don't know if it feels pain, but it was pretty shaken up. Bones are starting to fall off of it. It's looking quite hurt. And then I would like to move away. You have a look on you that's like, but you can't do an AOO. Is that true? I'm not disengaging. I'm simply moving away. Okay, so AOO time. Okay. All right, cool. It's going to do that. Can't you bonus action disengage? That's not what I'm going to use it for. Oh, Oh, okay. Yeah. I just, Andy's body language, whatever it is, he cannot fucking wait to do this. I love optimizing <laughs> rogues. Whatever is coming next, Andy can't wait. It's definitely, I believe, a hit. It's a 23 to hit. <laughs> that definitely is. Yeah. All right, cool. Eesh. I do not fear you. 13 slashing damage with attack. But I should. Yikes. <laughs> 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 Oof. Oh, no. (laughs) Almost max damage. (laughs) I retreat my full movement, which is 40 on the first turn of combat, and I hide as a bonus action. After that hit, you should have. Rolling a 25 stealth. You're gone. End of turn. You jump like an arctic fox into the snow head first. (laughs) You're gone. (laughs) God, I should have just fucking disengaged. God damn it. You should have definitely disengaged. You ate some shit, man. (laughs) All right, cool. I wanted to get hidden more than I wanted to not take damage. Mm. Range stealth attack. Yeah. Yeah. That is Everett's turn. We go to Jib. All right. Can I get into a flank with this one that attacked me and Wink? Yeah, you already are. Okay. So then I'm rolling this with advantage. I'm going to jab my sword at it. And I can just re-roll one of these every time if I have advantage as an elf, elven accuracy. Yes. I believe that's how it works. That's great. That's how I understood it, and that's fantastic. That's a 26 to hit. Yep. (laughs) Yes. Yeah, it does. It does. Thought so. Okay. That's nine piercing damage. Does it look like that was fully effective? Piercing damage? Yeah. Strikes true. Yeah. I guess a bigger skeleton. Okay. I'm going to do that again because, you know fighter just yeah gotta... you get to do that now you rested in a tiny hut and all of a sudden you know how to attack twice it's pretty cool that's right i'm just gonna keep swinging that's how rpgs work i rested in a tiny hut i can now swing my arm twice in a row <laughs> uh now it's a 24 to hit also manages to hit it yeah and now i'm putting up grand numbers that's gonna be another 10 piercing damage. Nice. another really effective blow against the skeleton all right cool wink you gonna stay up close like this yeah I think so. All right. For planning purposes, you know. Oh, yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> Should have a very casual conversation between Two the legs of this giant skeleton. skeleton. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool, cool. We go to Sopo, the hero. Sopo <laughs> is 60 feet away. Sopo will use all of their movement to get closer to the skeletons, but unfortunately from where they are, you see them huff and puff and let out a plume of frost breath, but it's not close enough. That's Sopo. We go to the familiar. Well, that's all right, Sopo. Just you stay over there. That's just fine. <laughs> What's this bird going to do? I guess it'll just hold its action to swoop in and help me if if you need it wink were to get out of flanking with me for some reason or another all right cool we go to the really beat up skeleton it can't see everett so it will still roll a d4 and we'll see who it'll hit sopo is an option as well it goes for kessa actually who is at a distance but this creature will use its action to hit her with a freezing stare so that's actually a con save from kessa this thing slowly creaks its brittle boned head completely to the side and just opens its jaw and its eyes start to glimmer and glow i don't like that yikes what's her con mod she fucking just passed okay all right cool that's its turn. What a wash. Wink. 
you are in between the two skeletons. Mm -hmm. One of them you are not flanking, the weakened one, and the other one you are in a flank with with the jib. Yeah, so I'm going to step around so I can thunder wave both of them. That's what I'm going to do. Okay, you stay in melee range, you don't throw... Okay. Yeah, I'm staying in melee range, just maneuvering a little bit so I can clap them both. Do a clappies. Con saves from both of them, please. All right. Well, on a dirty 20, I assume the weaker one saves. Yep, that'll pass. The less weaker one does not on a total six. Okay, cool. So there is no size limit on the push from this thing. That's insane. Nice. (laughs) That's insane. It is. So the weakened one takes half of 13, so six thunder damage. And the less injured one takes 13 thunder damage. The one that did not save is pushed 10 feet away from me. Okay, Jib can make an AOO. I would say that because of its size, because it's a 15-foot creature, it's possible that it moves 10 feet and still doesn't leave Fair. Jib's melee range. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's true. That makes sense. Cool. That being said, the weakened one, the bones are trembling. This thing is not looking good at all. Okay. And then I'm going to shimmy back along the side of these goobers just so I can reassert my position in the flank with Jim. Got it. Cool, cool. Would you rather we switch places? I got this big shield here. I can take a couple hits. Nah, I reckon this one isn't going to be a problem much longer, so I just want to set you up for success. I appreciate it, buddy. Thanks. Wow. <laughs> this fucking, fucking dialogue is so, banter. Gosh, so good. <laughs> Tactics and strategy. <laughs> the other, yes. <laughs> with friends. That's right. All right, the <laughs> other skeleton will now take its turn. It knows who it is going to attack. Wink, you just frustrated the shit out of it. It is going to slowly creak its head at you, its eyes glow. Blowing. Give me a con save, please, as it attempts to use freezing stare at you. Con save? Whoa. Oh, boy. Okay. Didn't expect that. The move that the other one did this turn? Yeah, that'd be unpredictable. Oh, I mean, okay. Oh, I thought you were really joking. No, I actually honestly didn't because oh. they have big weapons and shit. But... Okay, that is an unnatural oh, 20. God. Okay. No damage. Nothing bad happens. Good. <laughs> Eat shit. <laughs> All right. See, as a DM, I can really relate to Jeffy here, and Jeffy is starting to further understand it feels good to use cool abilities from stat blocks, but, you know, it happens. The game played with dice. Yeah. All right. Kessa is going to go. She will stay at a distance. She is a tactician at heart. She sees the weaker one. She looks down at her bow. She suspects she might be able to take a shot that would end this thing. She's going to go for it. Fucking get him. Got him on a 22 to hit. Boom! The damage from this weapon is not phenomenal, but her roll was. Kessa looks over as these skeletons' faces begin to glow. She suspects that the two of you might be in some grave danger. She doesn't know if whatever's going on with those skeletons is going to continue. She draws back, looses an arrow, and one pierces right through the open mouth of the skeleton and just takes its head clean off, rolling and shattering on the icy ground. The skeleton is no more. Nice shot. And that was the tale of how skeleton number one came to fall in Icewind Dale. Whenever any of our friends in either Ravnica or Theros, you didn't be like, okay, Volkos, paint a picture. (laughs) (laughs) And then just did Volkos' voice. Anyway, that skeleton is deleted from the game. I mean, there's no limit to Master of Tactics. She's going to just do it again. I mean, there's no reason not to. Yeah, she'll give it to Jib. How's she going to help Jib? Is she, like, barking orders at us? <laughs> That's basically, like, she'll be saying, Jib, avoid the ribcage. Lots of holes there. If you're piercing, it won't work. Really bifurcate this thing. Okay. You seem like an expert at this. Bifurcate. So now I have three options for advantage? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just pick whatever one you like. It is Everett's turn. Okay, I'm going to shoot the one that's left from hiding. This is with advantage. That's going to be a 19 with my longbow. Yeah. And that is going to be sneak attack. Okay, 13 piercing damage. Takes that hit. And then I would like to use my bonus action to hide again. Go ahead and roll. That's another 25. If the combat goes another turn, Kessa will not be giving you any help, but you'll be hidden, so it won't matter. That's fine. (laughs) All right, now it's Jim. Okay, so I'm going to take Kessa's advice to heart and also feel the power of friendship, flanking with Wink, and also my bird is here, guiding my hand subtly. (laughs) I also draw on my elven ancestry, so I feel like it'd be very (laughs) unlikely for me to miss this attack. Well, we'll see. Wow, it's a good thing I have that, because I rolled a one and a five. (laughs) <laughs> wow the jimmy dice are fighting so hard oh and now it's a six for a 13 to hit it does not hit you do. Oh. 
<laughs> God damn it. After that whole <laughs> spiel about how you thought it would be so hard to miss. It, ju- <laughs> it just misses. It just misses. Hubris. There's too much going on here. I'm distracted. Fucking birds nearby squawking at you or whatever it's doing. Kess is barking orders. Wink's nearby. You're worried about hitting Wink. What a mess. Choked under the pressure. You remember the words of advice from your Uncle Jetty? Yeah. <laughs> That's right. I hear my Uncle Jetty <laughs> echo in my head. What's going on? <laughs> You're still trying to suss out whether that really was the right way to load a cannon or not. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Yeah, I rolled a one, a five, and a six. So... Good thing you have extra attack. I do have extra attack. I'm going to do it all over again. And you have action surge, right? I do have action surge. You're right. Don't blow through that. We're saving action surge for the boss. That's why I haven't cast Hunter's Mark at all. Action surge comes back in a short rest. Oh, Everett is going to need one of those, so go ahead. Yes, short rest. Just making sure. Okay, let's try this again. This is still <laughs> shitty. Sorry. It's a 19 to hit. Oh, it hits. Yeah, you're good. Yeah, I know. It shouldn't have taken this much to get there is probably what you're thinking, right? <laughs> it yeah. shouldn't have taken all these dice to get you to a 19. <laughs> <laughs> That's 10 piercing damage. This thing's looking rather weak into its patella. That seems about a right spot. And I'm going to action surge and do yeah. it again. Nice. These are, this is another 19. Okay. There we go. And another 10 piercing damage and the other patella. With both patellas looking not great, if it had like a user interface, the numbers would be red. Got it. All right. It's Sopo's turn. You, you have, have one, one more attack. 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 Action search. Oh. Oh, I get four attacks yeah, when I action, action search? Yeah, is a full action. Right. It's another entire action. Yeah, it's not like haste. It's I everything. Holy All right. shit. This is great. It's another 19. Okay. Yeah. Get him. Oh. <laughs> Let's three see. attacks in a row. The highest of three dice was 12. It's only eight piercing damage this time. That is seven more than the one HP it had left. Uh, Jib, please tell us a tale of how skeleton number two came to fall on Icewind Dale. All right. Well, I poked one patella. That seemed effective. <laughs> then I poked the other patella. Uh, and then I remembered that I can attack again. And so I just with one final last jab, I reached up real high, stretched out all the way with all of my height and length and stabbed it right in the middle of the rib cage, and it fell over backwards. Cool, cool, awesome. As you do that, Sopo saunters over, blows a little too late. The corpse is gone. Sopo was not very helpful this combat, but tried their best to help. Thanks, Sopo. And we exit initiative. Everybody put up a timer for how long before Andy asks about those axes. I ask about those axes. (laughs) (laughs) Everett comes out of hiding, sneers at Sopo, and investigates these axes. All right, cool. Hey, Jib, you mind translating something for me? Sure. Now, Sopo, that wasn't very folk punk of you, <laughs> what you just did there. And I'm a forgiven soul, but my two friends here, they're killers. And if you try some sort of mischief like that again, they're going to kill you. I'm just saying this for your own safety. This isn't about me. Like I said, I'm forgiven, but my friends... They'll cut your little head off. Kessa will come in and say, make that three friends. You notice that she's actually starting to speak in the primordial tongue. The reason for that is she has Master of Intrigue, which allows her to mock speech that she's been hearing. Hmm. Hmm. Wow. So, Sopo, we have some concerns with your performance. I don't want to be the bad guy. This isn't coming from me, really. But we just want to make it very clear to you that we don't really need you here So take from that what you will, but if you were to, say, make another miscalculation of that sort, we might find a way to remove you from our company permanently, if you catch my drift. Go ahead and roll Persuasion with advantage. Wink set you up for success. Can I make it Intimidation? Did I say Persuasion? I meant to say Intimidation. I'm so sorry. It's a 15. Cool. Yeah, on a 15, Sopo sinks down. It's just I get bored, but... That's no excuse. I'll help. I promise I'll help. But Kessa actually, continuing that mock language, you absolutely will help. And I think Jib offered you a kindness, but I'd be comfortable with a different alternative. And she'll turn to the three of you. Are any of you good with rope? I'm sorry. I had something in my ear. What did you say? (laughs) Are any of you good with rope? I mean, I like to think that I am somewhat of an expert with rope. What is it you need doing? I would like them bound and gagged, please. Keep their arms loose so that they can point the way, but that'll be all they're capable of. Sopo, I hope you find this agreeable. If it's not this, we will kill you. Jesus, this fucking Act 3 Kessa is cutthroat. I mean, 
think about the way she talked to you all in the first episode. She's always been pretty cutthroat. Yeah, her personality has not changed much. We were just good at our jobs, so we didn't have to deal with this shit. It's just a completely unlikable DM PC. It's great. I like it a lot. All right, I look at Kessa, and I look at Sopo. Okay, fine. And I take out a coil of rope. Cool, cool. Just from eyeballing Sopo, I assume maybe 18 feet of rope will probably be sufficient for this task. And I encase Sopo <laughs> in rope with their arms sticking out from between. Two arms yes. and eyes. It looks like yes. the fucking it from Adam's family. Like just the hairy. Yes. Yeah. It still kind of looks like Sopo. Like I've almost made a facsimile of Sopo out of rope. Yeah. Yes. Oh my. <laughs> Ropo, if you will. Ropo. It's yeah. Sopo just evolved into Ropo. Ropo. Good God. All right. Cool. That all to do. How you feel in there? <laughs> Sopo. Good? All right, good. I told you my friends wasn't as forgiven as I am. See, I like a good party mascot, but... Sopo gave a thumbs up when you asked how they were, and then when Wink said my friends aren't as forgiving, turned it to a thumbs down. <laughs> Let us continue. Sopo will start to point in a direction. Before we do any rolls, someone was curious about some axes that fell on the ground. Thank you, Jeppy. I thought you'd never ask. Yeah, no problem. I have a 15 investigation or arcana. They're the same. You don't need the investigation. You see the fucking thing. It fell from the enemy. But the arcana will be to surmise what this is. Does anyone else want to roll arcana as well? Uh, Anyone else interested? Don't know if I'll learn anything. The halfling's not one again. It's only a five. I got a flat 17. Okay, cool. Jib Everett, you pick it up. It takes both hands to pick up this axe. It is a great axe. However, on the arcana, you are able to tell it is a great axe imbued with frost. So what it is, it's a magic weapon. So it adds one to hit and one to your damage. It's a great axe. However, this one, since it has been resting under the surface of Grimscale, which is known to be ripe with magical energy, once per long rest, you can activate this thing with cold runic damage to deal an extra 1d6 cold damage upon strike. Cool. Very, very good. Neato. And I know rangers are proficient with great axes. They (laughs) are not? Yes, they are. Rokaz. Yes, they are. That was their weapon of choice. Oh my god, you're right. You're absolutely right. Also, like, come on. Wrath of the Lich King, World of Warcraft, survival spec, great axe. Oh my god. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I love that. Survival hunter in Lich King was legit. So good. I loved PvPing as it. It was not the meta, but I loved it. I always love survival hunter. Like, Mm -hmm. it's just so much fun. Oh, me too. I mean, you're not that kind of ranger now, but... I look at one, I look at the second, I tell the rest of the party, these are quite powerful. I would like to hold on to one, but both would be, I think, too cumbersome. Wouldn't you agree, Jim? I'd agree. Even one is kind of, you know, heavy for my use. Well, I'm not taking it. Let's get on with it. If I can carry both, I'll carry both for now. (laughs) I'm looking right to Scala. You think I fucking know how weight works in this game? Please. What's your strength score, Andy? (laughs) 16. You could probably carry two great axes. 16 is pretty good for carrying capacity. I'll carry one for now and then stow the other one with my longbow on my back. Five times your strength score. 16 times five is 80. Okay. Eh, fuck it. You can carry it. <laughs> it's only seven pounds. Go ahead and sell it to Axie McHatcherson back in town. Awesome. You do that. Sopo sticks their arm straight out ahead let's go ahead and do a group survival or nature check given that sopo at this point is basically being carried and held out in front sopo will no longer make the checks but the three of you plus kessa will continue to do so who is carrying sopo kessa's got sopo (laughs) Ooh, that's a good roll 21 kessa got the same one three and if this is still a disadvantage for everett it is uh, i still got a dirty 20 all right you make it through a seemingly endless field, the giant ice skull getting closer and closer into your view. Let's do one more at this point. The skull is close. You can see now the way up leading into a mouth is definitively a staircase. But you're still... At this point, I'd say you're maybe almost a thousand feet away. Let's go ahead and do one more. Only a ten from me. I got a fifteen. Eleven. Feels low. Okay. Awesome. You are now at the foot of Grimscale. Go ahead and roll me perception. <laughs> oh, finally, a nat one. <laughs> but, like, the good kind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This, this freaking halfling luck has been so clutch. Yeah, I re-rolled it to a four, so that's seven. Uh, six. I get another 15. It's harder to see from up close. Okay, Kessa will also roll. Oh, 
fucking mod is negative one. Okay. Everyone is able to see that these stairs that lead up to the mouth of this fortress were made for giants. These are huge steps. Wink, even with your smaller stature, it's not like you wouldn't be able to make it up them. It will be an endeavor for you. Everyone else will be able to make it up these steps. They are just huge. They are designed for giants. That much you can tell immediately. Everett, on a 15, you can't quite make it out. The staircase is a long one, and it goes up the side of a hill into the mouth of this fortress. But what you can see right at the mouth of the fortress is a large closed door, and you can't quite tell, but pockmarking that archway, you think are etchings or something, but from here, it's really hard to make out what that is. Now, before anything else happens, Sopo will go, and start clapping and waving their arms frantically to try and get your attention. What is it, Sopo? You having trouble breathing? <coughs> Continued sounds of distress. Hold on. Kessa's going to take a look around to see if Garen is nearing, and I invite you all to do the same. Before we let this thing speak more, can we be sure Garen's not around and wouldn't be able to hear it? 21. Fantastic. Another nat one. Holy shit. Oh, that's much better. 17. 19. On a 21, you're able to confirm. Even if you were to free Sopo and Sopo were to let out a yell, you don't see anything that close by. I don't see anything that close by. Okay. She'll go ahead and pry open and loosen up and unravel the rope that's covering Sopo's face. Well, this is the foot of Grim Scully, but if you're looking to either get the jump or do whatever it is you're trying to do with these people, we should go over here on the other side and hide. This is the spot. So Sopo's pointing towards the right side of the staircase. So you all can make your way over there if you'd like and go ahead and make a perception check if that's what you want to do. That's what I want to do. Sure. 17. 19 perception. And a... I trust Sopo implicitly. You got a dirty 20. All right, yeah. You make your way around the side of the staircase, and you can see that as the staircase continues up towards the fortress, it is starting to have some height to it. And carved along the sides of the staircase are weak spots in the ice and even a couple of smaller discrete caverns. And Sopo points out one that you can look into, and it's actually like a small little tunnel that you all might be able to just sit in and lie in wait pretty safely. And how close to the bottom of the actual steps is this? About 45, 50 feet from the bottom of the steps. And given our previous checks against the stairs, roughly how tall is each step compared to us? Wink, how tall are you? I am two foot (laughs) ten. Two foot ten. Okay. Amazing. Well, shit. Less than half. All right. Each step is two foot five. Basically, Wink will have to grab the step and hoist themselves up to get up a step. Two and a half feet. Great. And lengthwise, each step is quite long. It'd be a little walk on each step before you get to the next step. This hiding place is, I think, good. But I am thinking, perhaps myself or even Kessa, if we were to hide on the steps themselves further up in case they try to flee inside we would be able to head them off if they thought it best to avoid us does Aura want them inside we ain't experts on what Aura wants all we know is that these people we are pursuing they wish to destroy Aura (laughs) that's a good one we wish to have no part of this we simply have come for the girl which they have hostage why do they have a Okay, well, it's up to you. I showed you the spot. You also could just hide in the snow if you wanted to. I'd like to watch whatever happens next, though. Now, Everett, I don't like the idea of y'all going up those steps. If we do this, I want us to have a path to retreat. While you're all doing this, you can hang out in that little tunnel and discuss and consider this a short rest, by the way. Okay, great. In the time that you waited for what may become an encounter, a short rest would make sense since you're getting there ahead of them. And if you do want to spend hit dice, you get an extra three hit points back. What are you saying? What are you singing? What am I singing? I mean... I'm almost back to four. Now, I'm still working on a song for us. Y'all want to hear the song we had back in Red Rock? Wow. I'm dreadfully bored. I'll listen to anything you got. Was this your hit single? Yeah. I suppose it kind of was. I... I ain't know what a hit or a single is, but it sure was a song we like to sing around the campfire. Goes a little something like this. Quiet old town of Red Rock, humble as can be. Up on the hill there's an old grain mill and there's not much else to see. The quiet places can make some noise, that's something you best bear in mind. Cause if you come 
I'm out here looking for trouble. There's trouble for you to find. You'll find us. Red Scar Bandit, a rough and rowdy crew. We know we're not friends. It's just a thing we have to do. Red Scar Bandits, we're thinking that you're better known. That if you try to pry from the little guy supply, I'm gonna tell you how it's gonna go. We'll catch you by surprise, stick them up to the skies, cause we're taking back what you owe. Bound up, Sopo starts slamming their hands together and clapping for you. Anyway, you can continue talking about how you want to approach this situation. Is there a tree line or a snowbank line that would be in the direction of where we came? No trees. Some sort of cover I could take that is farther back in the opposite direction, somewhere we would flee to. Yeah, I would say that there's a snowbank or a hill. How far away are you looking to see if it is, though? As far away as 150 feet. Okay. Because Everett, as much as he wants to be the one to grab this girl, he understands that his best asset is at range. Yeah, I mean, looking around, there's definitely 150 feet of stairs in front of you. There is a snowbank you could hide behind, but it's more than that. It's probably three, four, or 500 feet away. So you could hide there. You would have to run out, spend some movement. You'd be exposed to take a shot unless you hid in the snow or went further up the staircase, basically. Yeah, I could even just hide in the snow if there's enough snow. Just 150 feet away from in the direction of where we came from. I'll have you do a nature check first to see how good you are shoveling through, and then a stealth check to see how good you are nestling into that spot. Could I call that first check survival? Yeah, I'll call it survival. Great. In some sort of phrasing, I relay my thoughts on this to the party. And just so I know, where are you going to be off to the side? or I would be in whatever direction we think we're going to try to escape towards if we need to. Okay, got you. It would be the direction you came from. You, with the guidance of Sopo took the most direct route. That's what I was thinking. Gotcha. Okay, so I know where that is. Okay. Okay. I would like to get my bird into view up in the air, as high up as it'll go, keeping the telepathic link, just hoping to maybe spot them a little sooner than we would otherwise. Mm. Yeah, go ahead and roll me perception and see if the bird can spot it now. Okay, yeah, I'm going to roll perception. That's only a nine. Oh, wait, no, it's sorry. It's with advantage. Keen hearing and sight. It's actually a 17. Awesome. On a 17... In spite of some wisps of mist on this island and the twilight overhead and it is late at night, the bird is able to see at quite a distance. And you can tell that the party you're waiting for is maybe a couple thousand feet away. You'd suspect another 10 minutes or less of waiting and they'll be here. All right. Jib's eyes went white as he looked through the bird's eyes and then came back and said, we don't have much time now. Let's lock in our plan. Everett, you'll hide in the snow, I take it. Yes, I also have a number of traps and a fairly powerful snare spell I could cast. But the location would need to be specific. We would need to likely wait for them to begin climbing the first stair. My thoughts exactly. If there's one place we can guarantee they'll be, it's at the foot of the staircase. Guess uh, your line of thinking is quite wise. Yes, well, I can't guarantee that I won't make this personal, but I do think hiding and wait might be the way to go here. So I'll just stay here until shit goes down. Will you also be at range, Kessa, with your short bow? I think it's the way I'm able to best direct this party and make sure we're able to do what we can do. How about over there? She's going to hide close enough to be able to give Jib and Wink the help action. Because you're going to be far away. It'll be pretty fucking useless for her to go near you. But I'm going to set those three bear traps and the snare spell. And I'm also going to activate the nether sand. Jib, I can make us unseeable if we want to hide somewhere out in the open, so to speak. As long as we cover our tracks through the snow, they shouldn't be able to see us. If you think that's a wise use of your magical juice, or however you phrased it earlier. I mean, we got this little crevice to hide in, I suppose. If you think saving the juice matters, if you think maybe positioning is more important, then we could have that position wherever we want to be, and still be unseen. How far is this crevice from the bottom of the steps? Like about 45 feet. The crevice makes it so that you don't have to worry about rolling stealth, but if you're planning to go invisible and going to make an attempt to rescue Denna, keeping us free of combat, I think the best place to stay is right here. And she'll motion to the beginning of one of the banisters to the staircase. You may be able to 
take her quickly and we could run for it, but hedging a lot of bets. You could even uh, simply wait on the first step itself and jump down. Could do that. And just out of character, you are willing to burn that spell slot for that? Oh, yeah. I have another third level spell slot, and I think this is a good use of one to have us both invisible for the start of this. Okay, that seems like a good plan. Well, come here. I gotta put a hand on you. I'll cast invisibility at third level, and Jib and I are gone. Woom, 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 gone. Cool. Real quick, Kessa and Everett need to make some rolls. Everett, survival or nature, followed by stealth. You got it. When you're invisible, can you see through your own eyelids? I believe so, yeah. <laughs> That's really That's weird. Insane. That's crazy. <laughs> oh my god. That's also horrible. Like, you just can't close your eyes really that sucks that's great it's an advantage for combat but like the rest of your life that's miserable sometimes i want my eyes closed no i mean your eyes are still closed you can just see through them yeah so it's not like it hurts like yeah what if i don't want to see what if i'm scared while you're invisible you cover your face in a pillow (laughs) i don't know (laughs) you're doing life wrong if you're scared while invisible you try to cover your eyes with your hands and (laughs) it doesn't work (laughs) nice 28 survival. And on the stealth, 29. Okay, yeah. Cool. Are you even on Grim Scully anymore is the question I have. <laughs> All right. Kessa is not quite as well hidden as you. We shall see how that plays out. She rolled fucking quite poorly on her nature, and her stealth was also pretty shit. Kessa just let Sopo run off, and Sopo is hanging out in that little cavern area. They start to come into view. Sorry, there would have been two things I wanted to rattle off before we see them. Go ahead. Wink, I don't know if you want to give a bardic before combat. No. And other than that, Everett would make sure to say, we should try and take out who we think will be obviously weaker. Garen should not be our opening target. We need to get him alone. Our concern's Dana. That is right. We ain't got to kill any of these people. We get her, we go. Yes, And the less of them there are, the easier that will be. I do not know if I can take Garen out in one shot, but I am confident in my ability for the others. Dana comes into your view. The whole troop does as well. You see Garen and two other Vetus soldiers in what looks to be padded armor. Dana being held, Garen's large, imposing hand grabbing at her small upper arm guiding her along human female she is younger i think she was described as 12 years old before long black hair and you can even see resplendent blue eyes they make their way to the foot of the staircase to take a moment to look up at this imposing structure before them anything you want to do so i have three bear traps and a snare hidden in the snow there i don't know how you want to delegate that if you want to make it random or yeah I don't know how that spell really works exactly. It would require a intelligence check against my spell save DC to see, but that's if they're looking for it. Okay. And then the traps are just hidden in the snow. Okay, here's how I'm going to handle it then. It is the two soldiers and Garen who is holding Denna. Mm-hmm. The first soldier will hit the trap. They're not looking for it. Okay. At that point, the other two will roll against to try and find your others, assuming there might be some more in the snow. So how does that work then? One does spring the trap. So that's springing a trap. They have to make a dexterity saving throw. It's a 17. That will pass. It's half damage of anything or? Not for the bear traps, no. Oh, wow. What? Seems fucking off. Okay. Well, they pulled their foot out before it. Exactly. Oh, right. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yep. That'll happen. Watch your step in the snow. There may be more of these. Garen will say that putting his huge arm across the chest of the other soldier that has not yet stepped into a trap. That soldier is intelligence. This is a plus one mod 14. That fails. Okay. So that one's going to trip snare. Yes, sir. Immediately steps into it. <laughs> yeah, and I would say as soon as these go off, we should make our attacks. Sure. So that creature needs to make a dex save. Yeah, no, I'm going to guess an 11 doesn't do it. Okay, so we watch as they are hoisted magically into the air and hang three feet above the ground upside down. They are restrained there until the spell ends. They can make a save at the end of each of their turns if we go to combat. Cool, cool. Okay. I mean, when this guy gets hoisted, I think it's... Yeah, it's just go time. I think let's roll into initiative and have our surprise round. Yeah, makes sense. I like that. Okay. 
I'm not rolling Sopo in. Does anyone have a problem with that? <laughs> Sopo is watching. Fuck Sopo. Fuck Sopo. God, I fuck could... Sopo. <laughs> Literally in the Icewind Dale book, is bored and wants to do something with the players. So stupid. Okay, hit me with it. What did everybody got? 22. Oof. Damn, I thought Garen was going first. Guess not. <laughs> I'm the fastest draw in the north. My bird's at 18 and I'm at 14. Would you? What's your mod? Four. What happens when both the roll and the mod are tied for initiative? You can make it a roll off if you want. Okay, let's go ahead and roll off for this initiative against you and Kessa. I could just let Kessa go first. She got a 15 on the dice. And that's what happened on the die anyway. No one's surprised. And Everett, I didn't get yours yet. I've got a 19. All right. Immediately, soldier gets restrained. We go into our first round of combat, a surprise round. So when this soldier becomes restrained, Garen will look around and does spot a suspicious lump in the snow where Kessa is. There are enemies abounding. The other soldier, however, does not notice. So Garen will act in the surprise round, but the other two will not. Wouldn't it be... The other way around, wouldn't it just be that Kessa doesn't act in the surprise round? Is that how it is? I'm not sure. So the way surprise works is if you notice the enemy, you can act in the surprise round, but there may still be enemies that are hidden from you, right? Like if any of us were to attack Garen, we would still be unseen to him. I see. Like we would still have advantage on our attacks. That makes sense. And the one who didn't see any of us is surprised can't act in the first round That's of right, because it's not that the surprise round is a turn zero. It's still the first turn of combat, and if you are surprised, you do not act. It's not the other way around. Got it. Okay. Okay, so then the other two don't act in this first round. Well, actually, the restrained one would still be able to look around, so let me do that. And does also notice Kessa. So Garen and the useless shit will both go in the surprise round. The other one, busy trying to find the last bear trap. Oh, you probably want to know who goes first. It's Wink. I did say I'm the fastest draw <laughs> in the north. So draw. <laughs> I draw a picture of a pumpkin. Draw your D20, Giuseppe, and roll me a wisdom saving throw for Garen. Nice. Tasha's hideous laughter. It is Tasha's hideous I laughter. Obviously, I thought this encounter was more than likely going to happen. And I was like, I wonder at what turn Wink will try to make Garen, of all NPCs, try to laugh with a joke. Wisdom saving throw, yes. It's a mod. It's not a donut. It's something. 12. Ooh, not even close. Finally. Finally. Give me some real raspy laughter here, buddy. I <laughs> I find this hilarious that you think <laughs> what I've overcome with this feeling. That's so fucked up. <laughs> All right. So how does this mechanically work? So Garen falls prone, incapacitated, and unable to stand as long as I concentrate on the spell. This does break the invisibility for both of us. Both of us. Uh, unfortunately. At the end of his turn, he can make another wisdom save to try and end the effect. Or if he takes damage, he can make a wisdom save to try and end the effect. Okay. And I'm just going to say to Denna, as I appear out of nowhere... We're here to get you out of here. Make for the shore. Go, go. And I start running. I run 25 feet away from this combat. All right, cool. You do that. Denna will start to run as well. She'll run that length as well. What initiative is she on? She didn't roll initiative, actually, so. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. She actually is going to be up after Garen, so. Is that your turn? No. Bonus action. Give inspiration to Jib. Thanks, pal. Cool. Just Denna's POV. <laughs> <laughs> this banjo wielding halfling saying, We're here to rescue, and then runs away. And probably sings a song as they do that. <laughs> rescue team! Oh, and rescue team! <laughs> Get. No, perfect. No, please. <laughs> okay, fine. That's it. <laughs> rescue team! Rescue team! <laughs> Let's go, Jim! Yeah, rescue team. <laughs> All right, it's Garen's turn next. Can Garen spend the turn becoming unprone and then do the wisdom save? How does that work? Nope. Prone incapacitated for his whole turn, unable to stand. At the end of his turn, he gets okay. to make another save. So all I'm doing is saving then, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm hoping that that is a little bit better. How is a 16? Exactly my fucking spell DC. Damn. Damn You it. piece of shit. Oh. <laughs> Is there a he couldn't let me way? enjoy something for one minute. I mean, one turn of Garen might be really nice. So, you know, that's 100% more turns than you've ever gotten the rest of this campaign. Uh, I guess I got to take my small victories where I can. 
Yes. All right, that's Garen's turn. Then the restrained archer, what save does this? So he's restrained. He can attack with disadvantage, but otherwise has to make a deck save at the end of each of his turns. Otherwise is still restrained. Okay. I believe also an arcana check, if that's for some reason better. Someone else can make an arcana check to try and free them. Yeah. Okay, got you. Okay, do the deck save. Their dex mod is not that bad. Okay, uh, how is an 18? An 18 will pass. Was that with disadvantage? Because restrained? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, disadvantage. That's actually still a 15. That fails. Okay, moving on to Denna. Garen ungripped her as that Tasha's hideous laughter happened. And even though Garen was able to steal himself, not in time for Denna to start running away towards you, Wink. Good. She uses her movement. She doesn't use her full movement. She just gets to the 25 feet that you got to and she's near you. I keep waving her on. We'll be right behind you. She'll actually stop and say, who are you with? We're with your Aunt Kessa. She's here? Yeah. Y'all can have a right touch and reunion later. Now get on, get. Okay. She'll run the extra five feet. She could also dash. I will say that actually after she does that, she's going to stop and look back and just wait and see if Kessa comes out and make sure that Kessa is there. Okay. Fair enough. All right. Cool. Moving on to Everett. Yep. I'm going to shoot the unrestrained soldier coming out of okay. hiding and I'm going to bonus action hunter's mark and here I go. That is a 22 to hit. Dude, if it starts with a fucking 2, you hit. Don't even say it. <laughs> Very good. Always rolling over 20. So that's going to get the dread ant. I'm going to make a combat dice. where you have to roll fucking low numbers to hit. Andy. And a sneak attack dice. Find a way to do it. Besides the wall. And here I go. It's like you have a fucking Yahtzee cup of dice. What is this damage going to be? <laughs> well, I'm rolling four dice for this first attack, so that's fun. 25 piercing. All right. Launch an arrow into this soldier. He reels back, hit him in the gut in a lot of pain, but stands back up. Okay. How are they looking? You did a number, but they're not severely wounded, but hurt. Okay. I'm going to shoot him again. That's a 15 to hit. That just hits. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that was a pretty low roll there. And we've got about the sneak attack dice. 16 piercing. Okay, looking hurt now. Okay. Since I've started so far away, Wink and Denna are still really nowhere near me, right? You started how many feet away? 150. 150. They are not near you, no. They are okay. 30 feet closer to you than the enemy. Got it. So they are 120 feet away from you. Very good. Isn't the range on Hunter's Mark only 90 feet? <laughs> <laughs> Why, yes, it is. <laughs> Real quick, I actually want to keep this in. We're not retconning. We're not editing God this. Just tell me, tell me how much damage well, you, you can, owe me. You can take three three health off his... You hit him twice with Hunter's Mark. Yeah, it was a one and a two. They haven't been rolling that high. Oh, okay. Okay. God damn it. Sorry. Attorney at Rules Law in the building. Here's what sucks about podcasting, is no one gets to know the sunken look on Andy's face when Scala said, isn't that 90 feet? Like, frozen. Andy froze. Andy froze in place. Literally brought it up <laughs> earlier in the episode. God fucking damn it. And we're only level five. <laughs> yeah. Only level five. Oh, beautiful. Okay. I will hold my position and use my bonus action to hide. <laughs> uh oh. Go ahead. Uh oh. <laughs> Fucking finally. No, this is good. This is good. It proves you're human. That is a nav fucker. one. So a total of 11. I'm going to go ahead and use knowledge of past life. Adding four to that. Total of 15. I'm going to actually roll for Denna because remember, she is surveying around for Kessa. Okay. Everett. Denna spots you in the distance. Uh oh. Uh oh. And as she does, she begins to just lose it. She collapses to the ground. She's shaking is happening and as this happens a mist overtakes the area what is happening and for all intents and purposes we are all obscured in this combat now so all perception checks are rolled with disadvantage mm -hmm. woof okie doke all right that happens that is everett's turn familiar familiar is gonna give me the help action gonna swoop down and it makes sense guide me <laughs> all right cool it does that that is Familiar's turn. Next up is actually Kessa. So right now, Denna is mere feet away, inches away from where Kessa is hidden. Denna, I need you to run. I need you to run immediately. Keep running in that direction. Get out of here. Denna is like still trembling and looks up at Kessa. And Kessa can clearly see that Denna's eyes have glossed over almost a pearly white. And she is just 
not moving and not hearing anything that Kessa has to say. Kessa will just put a hand to Denna softly and then stand up and try to loose an arrow at the unrestrained archer that Everett has already done a number on. And she misses with a seven. She'll say, I can't do this at range. You need to get out of here. I need you to be safe. And she's going to run into the fray in hopes to just keep Garen away from Denna. And she will draw her sword as she approaches Garen and the other two. And that's her turn. We go to Jib. Okay. So Garen is no longer incapacitated, right? Correct. Man. The other soldier is still restrained. So pretty wounded soldier, Garen, and then restrained soldier is what's near you. All of them very reachable. See, it would have been really convenient to just tie up Garen, but... Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, would have been. The turn order didn't work that way. He is still prone on the ground. Does that mean you have advantage against? Mm-hmm. Melee attacks against prone targets have advantage. I have advantage against him anyway. Oh, you have advantage anyway. Once again, Jib has a buffet of how Jib would like to approach their advantage. Yeah, I want to keep Garen distracted. I can take a few hits. So from atop this first step, I'm gonna <laughs> gonna fucking pounce on Garen. This is like heroic. I love this. Go for it. Here we go with advantage. Gonna reroll that. Okay, that is a 26 to hit. Wow, you have managed to hit Garen okay. on 26. Yes, easily. Yeah, gonna pounce on him. <laughs> that is seven piercing damage. Get him, Jib. I'm gonna get him. I'm gonna get him. All right. I'm gonna get him again. Cool. As I'm on top of him now, she's gonna keep going at him with my sword. Go for it. <laughs> Rolled two sixes. Let me re-roll one of these. All right, now it's a seven. A Fourteen to hit. No, no, I didn't think so. You have bardic inspiration. You're right. If I had remembered that, I would have added it to the damage of the first roll. But this is a better use, I think. Technically, you're not allowed to use it if you know the outcome of your roll, but. I'll give it to you because you shook your head no before I said no, but you kind of knew that it wasn't going to be enough. Oh, yeah, I know a 13 is not going to hit fucking Garen Kang. Come on. Yeah, I'm going to use this bardic. You can go ahead and have the bardic. That's fine. <laughs> oh, no. I don't like that face. 14 is not going to hit Garen Kang either. God oh, damn it. 14 oh, is not going to hit Garen mother Kang, no. oh. <laughs> I just... I should have thought of better lyrics. Yeah, no, Jib just under his breath. Rescue team. Rescue. Oh no. oh no! Oh no! That's the saddest moment of the campaign. Un- untouchable. Oh, gee. Do I want to action surge right here, right now? I do. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna action surge. Yes. 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 Do yes, it. Yes. Rescue Get team. Em. Rescue team. Rescue team. Rescue team. <laughs> That's two seventeens. <laughs> yes. So, 24 to hit. All right. And that's going to be much better. That's 12 piercing damage. I couldn't ever roll that eight on the bardic. Okay. And we got one more. Awesome. That's 22 to hit. Yeah. And last one's only six piercing damage. All right, cool. You jump on Garen, and, like, the killer from Scream just plunge your sword <laughs> into Garen a few times Amazing. while they're still prone. All right, awesome. That is, that is your turn. We go back to... Top of the order with Wink. Okay. They're not wearing metal before you ask about your second favorite <laughs> fucking move in this campaign. Okay, I have other spells, you know. I do know, but I forget. I'm not the type of player who just relies on first order optimal strategy. Hey, sneak attack is a fun move, damn it. And don't ask me like that. S- sneak attack's a fun move. I say in clicks. Exactly. These people are all pretty close together? Pretty close. Yeah, I'd say no one moved. They're all within five feet of each other. And if I were to cast Fairy Fire, could I hit some of them without dousing Kessa and Jib? That'll be tough. Could I hit Garen and one other mook? I would say hitting the two soldiers might be your best bet. You're going to hit probably both your allies if you go for Garen. At least Jib. Mm. Jib went ghost face. I did? Scream killer. Okay, in that case, I'm just going to hold my action. But before I do, I'm going to use my movement. I'm going to take Denna by the hand and pull her another 25 feet towards the... The way out. The way out, (laughs) yes. Got it. Cool. And then I will just hold my action to cast a spell if I see people pursuing us. Okay, sounds good. It's Garen's turn. So Garen has to expend all movement to get out of prone, right? Half movement to get out. Okay, Garen does that. I am very disappointed, but what can I say? Most people are unable to break their bonds, he says to Kessa. As he says, I am disappointed, he will activate his rage. So he does that. 
As he does that, you see he is in padded leather, equipped for a snowy trek. It's thick, but some of that starts to rip at the seams of his shoulders. He's hulking a little bit here. I mean, that's what it is. <laughs> this fucking guy. Love it. That's what's happening here. And he will actually start by going for Kessa. And he will make this uh, attack recklessly. What's he attacking with? A great X. All right. I'm going to impose disadvantage with my shield. Yes. All right. He was rolling with advantage, though. He was. So that's a flat roll. So that is a 22 to hit. It absolutely hits. Shit. (laughs) He whacked her one good. He does 17 slashing damage with his great axe. Lays into her. Gets a sizable gash right across her stomach. And he goes, looks behind him and looks at you, Jib, and goes for you as well. He'll make an attack (laughs) against you. Uh, That's actually only a 14 to hit. I bring my shield back in front of me in time to block that attack. Yeah. Okay. I think that'll be Garen's turn. That brings us back to the restrained archer for another attempt at this. Yep. Okay, that is 17 this time? That'll just pass. Okay, all right, so they are no longer restrained. But that was the end of their turn, right? So they're done? That's the end of their okay. turn, yeah. All right. So they fall to the ground. They fall to the ground. I imagine they'd be prone, but it's their end of their turn anyways. All right, cool, that is Archer. Denna. Denna will look to you, Wink. We can't get too far. I need to be with that one. And she points back towards where Everett was. Whoa. What? Well, that's where I'm bringing you. We're all going to get out of here together. She looks definitely a little scared, but she says okay, and she'll run off. She'll use her full movement and dash to get away. She's 40 feet away from you, Everett. Anyway, your turn, Everett. Okay. I am going to shoot the one that I already attacked. Okay, go for it. And this is coming out of hiding. Advantage. That is a total of dirty 20. Okay, cool. And we've got sneak attack. 16 piercing damage. Okay. On death door. Okay. I'm going to bonus action dash towards Denna, 30 feet. I'm going to use 10 feet of my movement to get all the way to her. Mm-hmm. You. I have seen you. I have seen you in my visions. Make me a constitution saving throw. I should have done this. Oh, okay. Con <laughs> save. That's a 17. Okay, cool. Your head is pounding as you get closer and closer to her, but you're able to steal yourself. I have been brought here, brought to this place. I know not why, but it is to find you. You are going to come with us. Kessa is with us. We are going to take you away from these wretched people. And I am going to drag her the rest of my movement 20 feet back. Okay. And that's my turn. All right. Awesome. That is Everett's turn. Familiar. Go ahead and describe how it gives you the help action. (laughs) Yes. As it flaps its wings, there's this spectral ghosting effect. The color of northern lights, purples and greens and blues. Ooh, Ooh. I like that. That's awesome. Not sure how that helps, but that it looks cool. Sometimes that's enough. Sometimes shit looking cool is enough. It's Kessa's turn. She is hyper-focused. She's going in on Garen with her rapier. She's going to be starting melee attacks. Um, oh, she has advantage on this. And sneak attack would be... She rolled two twos. Okay. She doesn't need to use fucking master attacks. It's the only one close by is Jib, and Jib's just boundless in advantage at this point. So that'll be her turn. Came and went. Jib, you're next. All right. Attacking. Garen? Oh, yeah. There's another one here, isn't there? There's two. One is very weakened and the other one prone, but not harmed. Are they near enough to me to attack from where I'm standing right now? Yes, they are. You notice on both of them are long bows, though. So you suspect that they may not engage in melee combat with you. Got it. All right, I'm going to keep going for Garen. All right. I'm going to help out Kessa with this. Here we go. That's a 23 to hit. Yeah. These are the Jimmy dice we've been waiting that's for. That's right. And that's 12 piercing damage. Okay. You notice, given that Garen is enraged, that this piercing damage has less of an effect yeah, it than does. it otherwise right. would. Right, cool. Yeah, I'm going to do the same thing again, because that's almost all I can do from here. 24 to hit. <laughs> God, what are these dice rolls for you? I'm loving this. Go for it. It's advantage. And that's another 8 on the D8 for 12 piercing damage. Get him. Get him. Getting him. All right. Awesome. That's your turn? I literally don't have any bonus actions anywhere in my kit. So, yeah, I suppose. Is you it do have oh, I have second wind. wind. You're yeah. right. You're right. If you're hurt, but I don't think you have I'm not to. hurt, no. That's Jib. We're back at the top of the wink. Okay. Seeing that Everett is taking Denna, I'm going to do it. I'm going to move another 25 feet away. So now 75 feet away from this conflict. Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to conjure at the mouth of Grimscala a major image. Okay. I am going to create a vortex of snow and ice that whirls around in a large 
20-foot sphere, and from that vortex, as it dissipates, will emerge the image of Oral screeching. <laughs> All right. Yes. Cool. Do you want to do the voice for this, and I'll just tell you so what to say? Oral is not one that speaks. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I would know this? I guess you wouldn't. So you can actually go ahead and do that. Go ahead. Okay. Wretched mortals, you bring your weapons into my domain. The snow has tasted enough of your foul blood for this moon. I offer you mercy once. Depart and never return. That's what the illusion says. (laughs) All right. Let me roll something here. All right. You do this, Wink, and we'll keep going. Okay, cool. Anything else you want to do this turn? No, that was my move and my action. Actually, I'm close enough to Everett now. I will pass a little Bardic Inspiration along. You are 55 feet. Oh, okay. Then I think Bardic is only 30, so I don't do that. Never mind. Damn it. I wanted more rescue team. Okay. (laughs) That's fine. (laughs) We'll have more rescue team. We'll go back to Garen. You've been going into him, so he's going to come after you. Oh, it's 60 feet. Rescue team. (laughs) Rescue Rescue team. team. It's time for a rescue. Going to see what I mean. All right. (laughs) Awesome. Take your bardic. Garen will go and hit into you, Jib. Oh, they have advantage. Okay. With that, then, that is a 17 to hit. Doesn't hit. Damn. All right. It hits the shield and goes bang. Gonna go for it again. Damn. Your AC is looking nice. Yeah, it is. Fucking. Is a natural 20 hit? Of course it does. Uh oh. I can't even shield again. <laughs> uh oh. Not insane, consider. But it is still 18 slashing damage. Die. Cool. Garen seeing the progress that he's made after wailing into you will actually frenzy and gain an extra attack for this round. Uh oh. But we'll turn back to Kessa. Okay, I'm gonna impose disadvantage, so flat. Okay, I think he's gonna hit her just barely. Yeah, he just hits her at a 16. Ah, oh, shit. Kessa is looking very, very hurt. He just slammed into her and just got a really good cut into her body. Up next is Denna, and Denna will look and just say, that is not her. That's not her. That's not her. Oh, right. I'm sorry. I don't know if Jib would know that that's an illusion. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Everybody might be reacting to that. I will say, at the end of Denna's turn, however, because this wouldn't have happened instantly, Wink, after you did that, but from the eye of the skull, the rock will fly out. Oh, fuck. And smash down on the ground with Oral atop its back. What? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> ay, ay, ay. She does this close to Denna and smashes down to the ground in between the combat and Denna. I'm not going to roll her into initiative just yet. She's going to come down from there and just look to Denna. Everyone is like jaws agape dropping their weapons like what the fuck is happening this rock by the way the wingspan is 200 feet this thing is gargantuan very literally coral fully stood up quite a large creature imposing terrifying her and denna take a moment and denna just says to you she knows what you've done and she knows why we're here you can all roll history real quick yeah that'd be great flat 18 i got a 13 12 cool All of you would remember Simon telling you, Oral knows everything that happens on this island. Whenever a creature is on the island, she knows where its location is. She knows what is going on. She also was probably able to overhear what was going on below. Either way, Oral knows what is going on on the island and has now chosen to step in and intervene. We are not your enemy. We are bringing you to safety. I'm sorry, are you saying that to Oral or? I'm saying that to Denna. Oh, okay, okay. I know what you are, Everett. If that is true, then you know more than I. She turns back to Oral for a moment. Oral and her just communicate physically, nodding the head. You don't hear them saying anything. Denna will turn back to you, Everett, and Wink. She can help us get out of here. She's willing to do that for a price. Go on. Denna will yell out, Garen Kang is not the biggest threat, despite what he may think. Oral knows this. Garen, you can either surrender or befall her wrath. It is up to you, but you cannot win this fight. As for us, 
Her voice goes back down. There are forces at work in Bryn Shander that Oral knows are a real threat to her, and a real threat to Icewind Dale. Everett, you have lived another life. You probably think it was many ages ago. So many winters come and gone. One day, you woke up with this knowledge, and a noose around your neck covered in rags. And you remembered little else, and in that lack of memory, you grew tired and bitter. So you joined the Black Road Company, looking for meaning, but you didn't find it. You did, however, begin to form some memories. You remembered a group of friends, perhaps a tribe. And then slowly, you remembered exile. They cast you aside. And as more memories came into focus in your new life, you eventually came here, she gestures, to Icewind Dale, joining Vetus to find your lost niece because you believed your sister was dead and this young girl was your last living family. Or maybe she was someone from this tribe. But Everett, your memories fail you. Maybe it was guilt that made you forget, but you were not cast aside. And your past life wasn't ages ago. Two years ago, you belonged to Air Genesi, a timeless tribe dedicated to unearthing the secrets of the elements. Your people combed Faerun for a countless number of years, and in that sojourn, you made your way to Icewind Dale, and you heard tale of a great owl gesturing to Oral, whose power could harness the cold unlike anything seen before. Your people heard of sacrifices, and you, knowing nothing of what our Frost Maiden demands, took a family from their home in Bremen, and drove stakes into the ground, and called upon Oral herself for sacrifice. The sacrifice your tribe attempted failed, and it resulted in your death and the death of your people. But this wasn't the only result of that sacrifice. That family from Bremen died as well, all except one, and a bond with Oral was made, and you may wonder why I know this. It's because the sister that you seek was my mother, and that niece was me, and I am all that is left of that sacrifice, now bonded to Oral in ways I and many others will never understand. But the rulers of this land know enough to have taken me captive, and this, Everett, is why I brought you back, because you owe a debt to me, you owe a life debt to my mother. Once I recovered from that night and I learned of my powers, I knew that a day may come where that debt would need to be repaid, and now it has. Oral and Icewind Dale are bound to clash in ways we cannot comprehend, because once again, people have let their hubris betray the laws of Icewind Dale, and many innocent people will pay the same price my mother did, and you need to help put an end to it. Wow. <laughs> Whoop. God damn you, Jeffy. <laughs> I've been excited about that since the beginning of the campaign. So. <laughs> Everett stares blankly at this entire scene, his eyes casting about at Denna and Oral and Garen. You, you are the one who brought me back to this place. It's the least you could do. All this time, I thought I was searching for answers to a past life. That I thought I had lost. And now, now that I have been told this truth, I feel cold. My entire journey, I have felt the need to keep myself at arm's reach of emotion, of moral obligation. And to hear you claim that that is exactly what cost me my life, I only... Ask this one question. I was not the only one to do this to you. So why me? Because you were the one that spoke the words. And if you want your apology, you can earn it by coming with me to Bryn Shander. And you can earn it by destroying Fail Barrage. Damn. And that's where we'll end the session. Pods of the Multiverse is produced by Jimmy Afadigato. That's me. With music by Andy Berger and art by Alexa Riley. Subscribe to this feed to get a new episode every Monday. Check out the links in the show notes. You can support us by visiting our Patreon, joining our Discord, or sharing this episode with a friend. We want to give a special shout out to our Holy Avengers, Jake, May, and Chris. For $10 a month on our Patreon, you too can become a Holy Avenger. Thanks for listening.